Thank you guys for joining me today on Instinctive Addiction Archery. I'm Jeff Phillips. I'm so glad you could join me here today. Got a cool one here for you that I hope and pray as always that you'll enjoy and you'll find helpful. Okay, what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to explain a major, major difference between two of the most common shooting styles that's out there. Okay, if you ask any traditional hunter, any 3D archer, whatever, what do you shoot? What style do you shoot? Split or three under? They're going to tell you one of the two. They're either shooting three fingers under the string or they're shooting split. One finger over, two under. One of the two. Okay, guys, unless somebody's shooting like a thumb style or whatever, but anyway, we won't get into that. But just dealing with split versus the three under. Okay, I put out two videos way back on these and I had switched actually to split finger shooting after years and years of shooting three under. And I pretty much mastered it. I shot really, really well. However, I have gone back. You say, well, why? Why have you gone back? Well, let me tell you guys why. Because I really analyzed the big, big difference in the sight picture, okay? You have a sight picture when you draw your bow and you're looking at a target. You have a sight picture, okay? And what I realized for me, now this is just for me. It may not be for you if you're shooting just dead on split all the time especially out of trees and you're not snap shooting if you're not just coming and touching and shooting as fast as your fingers even get close to your face great and fine but what i have found is split finger shooting tends to cause people to snap shoot especially in a hunting situation uh, it really does because you got that target anticipation you got that little bit of panic going on you got that just everything's revved up and you're trying to rush a shot i have found personally shooting it live game when it's under pressure that three under allows me a way more natural anchor point okay uh, a way that i can get into my anchor and really feel it and not just that guys but my sight picture is more dependable okay now, shooting purely instinctive, looking at a spot, drawing, and shooting it and hitting it, that's what you do when you shoot split finger. You do. When you shoot three fingers under, you have a choice. You do. You got a choice, guys, to completely, totally ignore your arrow, which I do most of the time, unless it's long distance. But if you want to use your arrow as a peripheral backup you can because it's in your sight picture how do you think that guys shoot so incredibly accurate on a 3d course hmm? how do you think that's possible they're not shooting split finger they're not 99 percent. now they may be somebody out there but 99 percent, and i'm sure there are most of them the 99 are shooting three under why because it allows them it allows them to reference their arrow, if you will, okay? Whether you choose to or not, it's up to you. But it allows you to actually reference your arrow. When you draw the bow and you come into your anchor, your sight picture is just wide open and you cannot help but see where that arrow's at. Even if you don't look at the tip, if you don't look down at anything, it's there. You cannot ignore it completely. You can for the most part, but your peripheral vision will pick up the position of that arrow. In other words, if you come into your draw and you anchor and your dominant eye notices, oh, no, no, that, it's just not right. Well, it's not. And if, if your dominant eye tells your brain, good to go, that shot's ready, okay? Also, shooting three under really helps you hold a little bit longer and acquire that focus and use everything together it's kind of a combination if you will okay call it a combination whereas split you pretty much touch and go you're just looking at a spot you draw and you shoot okay i found that in an elevated position like a tree stand when i was shooting split i never could really feel that definite definite anchor point that i do have shooting three under i never could really just feel it now i could shoot really really good doing it and 
it does make a quieter shot, but it's not that much difference. If your bow's quiet, your bow's, you know, tillered up good and all that anyway, it's not going to make any difference, guys. And, you know, lots of people argue that there is no difference, and then lots of guys message me and say, hey, man, I tried it split, and yeah, my bow's a lot quieter. Well, it's got to do with how your bow is tillered to begin with. It does. Um, no two of them are the same. But with that aside, we're talking about the shot process. How can you be the most accurate that you possibly can? I mean, face it, if you're going to take one of these things to the field, like like I'm here at the farm now. I'm actually going to hunt this evening. If you take a bow like this and you're trying to kill deer with it, you've got to have a really rock solid shooting process that will overcome your nerves to begin with when the moment of truth takes place when you have a live animal in front of you and you're about to try to shoot it okay you got to have a process that's going to overrule anything that would cause you to snap shoot and not really acquire your focus and where you want that arrow to go and that's my point guys for me personally me personally i have a lot better target acquisition if you will on a on a small spot and using everything else in combination to make that shot happen and i do it quick okay i don't hold long but that's how my sight picture comes together and works i'm going to shoot a couple of times i i got my target out there and i'm on i'm gonna just assemble eight okay if that's a real buck if i you know, probably never would happen like that. But anyway, let's just say if it was a real deer, you know, what's going to happen? How, how can I shoot? My, my process has to take over. Especially if I'm like, oh my God, there's a, there's a book, there's a book, I got to shoot it. You got to have a process that you've done so many times that it's second nature. Okay? Here we go. And he is dead, my friends. D-O-A dead. That is the pocket if there ever was a pocket. Right uh, uh, right there in the crease, man. Okay, well, how, how does that happen? Because, I mean, all I did was look at the spot and shoot it, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, I did. Do I remember anything about my era? No. It, it all happened so quick, I don't. But it's there. It's happening. I'm just not recognizing it, Okay. Because when I drew, I had a slight can on my bow. All I'm thinking about is getting into my anchor. When I get into my anchor, and, and I'm going to try to pull through that shot, I'm looking where I want to shoot that deer. And the other factors, as far as my arrow lineup and all that stuff, come into play. But it happens so fast that my mind recognizes it and says, yes, you're good. You're good. It's there. And I shoot. Whereas if I drew, and I'm looking at it, and I noticed if I was to pay attention to my air and if my air was off, down, low, or to the right or the left or something like that, I wouldn't shoot. It, I, I would know that my shot was not ready, okay? That's why I like shooting three fingers under because it lets me use the entire sight picture window, the entire thing, everything together. It's no different than going up to a 3D shoot, looking at a target and saying, okay, hmm, where's the scoring on this thing and saying okay i gotta calm down and i've got to put an air right there in that little bitty spot and i mean you know it's just for score it's not hunting but still it's a very important deal to a lot of people well how do you do that you use a process that's going to work no matter what if you execute and do what you're supposed to do that shot's going to be there whereas if you just grip it and rip it probably not so you can get lucky. Anybody can get lucky, guys. Grip it and rip it kind of comes along with split finger shooting in essence, okay? I've had so many people, so many message me and say, okay, I'm shooting split, especially since I went back that last time. Guys message me and say, hey, Jeff, man, I've, I went back split and uh, I'm struggling. I'm one on, one off, one on, one off. Mm. Well, how do you answer that, guys? I mean, really, do you? Because the truth of the matter 
is I found it to be the case for me too. Not necessarily one-on-one -on -one off, but not as perfect as by far as I want it to be. And it's only because I can't get a consistent enough anchor, even putting my head in it. My sight picture is so incredibly different. So different. Because if I were to even pay attention to my arrow, it looks like it's angled up when I'm shooting split. It looks like it's just cocked up instead of that 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 plane, that line that I can, you know, get lined up and say, okay, my hands up, draw, and just see that that arrow is going to go right where it's supposed to go. I mean, in my peripheral, I can't help but notice that, guys. So that kind of links back to some of the older videos on, you know, using split vision. That's what it's called. It is split vision shooting. And you can only do split vision, I believe, shooting three fingers under. Now, if you're a split shooter now and you decide, okay, I'm going to go give this a try, man. I'm going I'm to try it. Well, you're going to shoot low. You're going to shoot about that low the first three or four shots. Why? It's just the difference. It's the difference in how you're anchoring, how everything, how you're perceiving everything. No different than if you're used to shooting three under and you go to split, you're going to shoot eight inches high at 15 yards. You're going to. You are going to. Okay, and just like I explained, how do you adapt to that? Well, it's just because you just you just get that elbow up good, and it kind of compensates for it. Well, shooting three under, you don't really do that. You pretty much you line up your you line up your your bow arm. You get it up plenty high where it needs to go. You get it where it needs to go, and then when you come in, then you bring your elbow up, and everything's right. It's just it's right and it's ready. And if you decide to hold it, you can hold enough time to verify everything before you shoot, okay? Before you start to expand through your shot and it go off. Because you don't mechanically release a string anyway. You expand and the string just rolls off your finger and that's when you get a clean shot. But you got to be honed in on your spot while you're doing that. So... That's it. See, I don't hold very long at all, but it doesn't take me any longer than that. See, it's kind of like if you decide, okay, if you want to hold, if you do, if you want to hold and really analyze everything in your sight picture, you can do that, okay? You can. And you might say, well, what am I looking for in, in this sight picture? Well, guys, if you're looking at anything else but the spot you want to hit, you're going wrong to start with, okay? Now, we're not talking about gap shooting, using the tip of the arrow to aim with. We're not talking about that. We're still talking about instinctive shooting here, where you're looking where you want to hit, and you're shooting it. That's it. But your peripheral vision will tell you when it's right. Just like the height of the bow arm, the position of the arrow, everything you will know. You will know when it's right. How do you do that? because you start at 10 yards until you master it. Then you back up more and more and more till you master it, till that sight picture, till it is programmed in your mind when it feels good, when it's right, and you know the elevation's right. You know everything is there, just like your arrow, okay? Remember, guys, I shared a in a video about using an arrow if you really want to. Now, I personally don't because I don't have to, but I did it in some 3D shoots to prove the point and it worked like magic. I mean, it flat out is deadly. It works, it's like shooting a rifle. You got a front sight, rear sight, front sight, rear sight. You line those two up, no, no different than a, uh, a gun with no scope on it, with iron sights, it's no different. When you got that thing lined up, it's going. I mean, going. You can actually use an arrow. That's why people do string walking, guys. Why do you think they do fixed crawls? Why? Because when you do a fixed crawl, that arrow is all the way up to your eyeball. You're looking right down the shaft, using it as a pointer. I mean, you are sitting here pointing it, saying, mm-hmm, that's where exactly where it's going to go. Well, I don't do it because it throws the tiller off so bad on the bow. It makes the bow loud. You lose energy, all kinds of funky things like that. I personally just don't do it. 
but with the style that I'm trying to tell you guys, just shooting three fingers under, you can do the exact same thing because your mind will say, yes, it is right. When it's verified and from shooting, when you shoot and it's on, then you say, okay, I know what that picture looked like. Go back and do it again. Remember the sight picture. I mean, just like that. Now, I mean, that is, that's, that's as perfect as a shot could be, okay? How do you do it that quick? How? Without really holding anything, just getting into anchor. Now, please, guys, if you're going to be like me, if you're going to shoot like me and you decide, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to hold it long because I'll make mistakes if I start trying to hold too too long, and you probably will. Don't short draw the bow. Don't cheat your anchor. Never, ever cheat your anchor point. I don't care how fast you shoot. You make sure that you are fully into that anchor and you expand through that shot. Expand through it. I mean, you've got to. Give your bow all it's got okay if you can learn to do that the whole time is irrelevant it, it doesn't matter how long you hold once you truly are at your anchor and you pull through that shot expand through it while you're looking if you can truly do that it's okay but if you find yourself getting right here i mean really guys if you find yourself getting right here and shooting Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not going to work. You'll never be consistent. You will never have a locked bow arm. You'll never have, you can't shoot like a machine short drawing your bow, especially out of tree stands. You've got to drill it into your mind. Draw that bow back and get into anchor. Then focus. It's all that fast. But you got to get into the anchor and focus and execute the shot. But that's why... I switched back to three under because I can shoot so much more consistent with any bow. Doesn't matter what it is. I personally can shoot more consistent and I just like my sight picture window. I like it. And if I want to shoot long distance, 35, 40 yards, whatever, then I can use that arrow. I'm not using the tip to aim, but I can sure enough tell the elevation of that arrow from knowing my equipment i know where i know where to hold my bow arm and i know where it needs to be to impact where it needs to impact at greater distances i can't do that shooting split finger because it just looks like my air is at too too hard of an angle if i use split and i draw man it just looks like the whole sight picture is different completely different so it was a split decision it was I made the decision uh, last week. Just, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to try three under one more time. I'm just, just going just gonna to go shoot a few rounds, three under, and see what happens. And I shot like that. And I found that I liked the feel. I liked the way it came in. I liked my sight picture. I liked, once again, being able to see where is my arrow at. Okay. I liked it, so I went back. So that's what I did, guys. So anyway, if you're struggling, if you're struggling, don't keep doing the same thing. Don't, okay? Because all it's going to do is make you quit. And if you're if you're blowing shots in the woods, if you're getting shots at deer and you're shooting over them, under them, whatever you're missing, don't don't throw the towel in and just throw your trad bow away and say, oh, I'm done. I'm not doing that anymore. If, if, if it's been burned into your heart to do it and you want to be successful, you got to be patient. Get your shot process nailed and be patient. Wait on the good shot. Get them close. Wait on a good close shot and perform your shot. Okay? That's all it takes. It's no different than anything else, guys. You got to do it like it's supposed to be done. In other words, you can't fling arrows at, at a walking body. You can't just fling arrows and give them Hail Marys and hope for the best. No, it's never, ever going to work for you. It's going to let you down. Okay? Don't want you guys to do that. I don't. So, do what's right. 
find a process that is rock solid, absolutely rock solid, and don't change it. Just shoot and shoot and shoot. And when the moment of truth comes, everything will be good. Everything will be good. Killing deers. Even if you shoot fast or if you shoot slow, it doesn't matter. Ooh, that was touching that first one. I love it, guys. I love it. It's so fun. All right, so I got to get ready. Uh, I'm not going to be long here now. I got to get changed over. We got a couple hours till dark, and Lord willing, we're going to get a shot. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here on Instinctive Addiction Archery. I'm Jeff Phillips. Love you guys, and just praise God for everything that he's given us, man. He's given us so much to be thankful for. Uh, just... Be, be aware of it. Take time to look around you. Even if you're hunting or whatever, just take time to look around sometime. Look at a sunrise or a sunset, and you will see. You will see. There is a God, and He loves us. He's good. He's good. So, guys, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.